went, I went to work. Yeah. I, I got a credit card. Never got a credit card before okay. in my life. Really? Thousand dollar limit. Wait, how old were you? I was twenty. Twenty. Okay. Two. Something like twenty two. First credit card. Thousand dollar limit. Yeah. What'd you do? Buy a bunch of leads. I just bought leads. <laughs> I just maxed it out. Dude. I just <laughs> nice. maxed it out. Maxed and then, it out. Um, and uh, listen, we're not telling sense. you to do that. That's David's result. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah that's if you want to, do. hey, that's on you. But, that's on you. 100%. But you, but you had faith that all right. Because, I mean, you've, you've helped families before in a different yeah. area. So I was know? like, I, I can do this again. You yeah. Know? And so I just bought leads, went to work. Yeah. And then what I did is, you know, 50% of whatever I made. Yeah. Just went back into the business. Back into business. And just went. Guys, welcome to True Talk and a special guest in the house today, my man David Pania. How we doing, David? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Awesome, bro. Thanks good. for coming up. Thanks for having me. I also, I, I, I mean it even more this time of year because Connecticut gets cold. Now it's not too bad, but you're coming from Dallas, so yeah. it's a little different. Dallas is a little bipolar. Yeah, you a little get bit. The best of both worlds, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's just a little polar up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I appreciate you coming up, dude. So you, Thanks, you've been man. with us, David, since 2021, right? Mm -hmm. You have some experience in the insurance industry prior, right? Yep. Um, and, and, you know, we talked a little bit before this, and, and you have a, a really cool story. And what I love about these podcasts, Dave, is we get to kind of step away from the insurance sales yeah. and, and kind of find out who's behind the producer. And it, it just goes to show you that everyone's gone through stuff, man. Absolutely. And it's all about pushing through and, and what's on the other side of that. Like you, and, and you looking back, it's always a good reminder, too, because it's like if you've gone through that, dude. What, what's going to be hard, right? Exactly. Like it, it's a good perspective. So I appreciate you coming in and um, let, so let's, so you grew up where was it? Did you grow up in Dallas? Or? Yeah. Grew up yeah. in Dallas, born and raised my hometown. man. Okay. Yep. Got it. Got it. And um, went to school. Did you go to college at all? Yeah. Went to college, uh, w went to community college, then yep. went to a university. Um, got it. But obviously I went there for soccer. Oh, you there. did. Okay. Yeah. On a scholarship? On scholarship. Oh, yeah. so you were good. That was all right. It was all, it was right. all right. You're a little humble, but. I mean, well, I, when you hungry, walked in, yeah, you, hungry, go, you, got, you know, the got the shirt on. Got the shirt on. But when you walk, did I not say you look like you could still play? And you do, yeah, right? I'll appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, so you <laughs> played all through. You made it to college playing. Yep. What was your plan after school, or were you just focused on playing sports? Um, I mean, I was still studying. Got my bachelor's in yeah. uh, human resources. Okay. Uh, did that whole ordeal, and I still still ball here. Got and there. it. So. What was your plan to do with the um, human resources degree? Um, just be like an HR manager. Yeah. And then I, w I actually did payroll services. Okay. And I was like, this is really, really boring. I bet. <laughs> and so that's kind of, it's funny because one of my best friends referred me over to the life insurance industry. Yeah. I said, why not give it a try? And okay. So you were doing the sense. payroll management at the time? Yeah, I was payroll services. I was at a desk, nine yeah. to five, the typical. And oh, I was man. like, dude, this is, I can't do this. How long did you do that for? Six months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so yeah, you, so it was quick. Yeah. Was and quick. now someone you knew was already in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, and they talked to you about it. It was a different company, right? It wasn't yeah, us. different company, yeah. Um, and what was it? Like, what, what made you even give it a shot? Dude, he just said, hey, I saw you post this, you know, like motivational speech. Yeah. You know, I think you'd be a good fit for our company. Yeah. And he's like, you want to come over and see what you got? I'm like, sure. Okay. Give it a shot. You, were you just fed up with the, or just yeah, I was like, mind? I mean, I was like, dude, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> it's like, I felt like I had more to offer. Yeah. Really, yeah. that that's how I felt. Did any part of you think like, dude, if I switch now, like I wasted all this time in college, I got this degree, or were you just so? I, I was like, at the end of the day, like you know, I love my mom, yeah, love her to death. Um, but at the end of the day, it's my life, yeah, you know, and I'll make it happen one way or another. I'll got make it. it happen, yeah, you know. And my mom now, she's like, she's thankful. <laughs> yeah, at the time was she not or I mean, not happy? She she just said whatever makes you happy, yeah. but make sure obviously it sustains you know your got life. It. And all that, and that was the most important part. Yeah, no, that's cool. But they originally they wanted you to go to college. College, route. that's yeah. and so that's why I did it. Honestly, it. was to let my mom know, hey, you know, I did it. Yeah, I did what you wanted me to do. Yeah, but now it's my turn to Got to do it. what I want to do. And were your parents born here? Or they're born in, in Columbia. Columbia. Okay, they're born in Columbia, which is traditionally what happens, right? Yeah, you get people come from wherever you came from, and that's it's like we're here for the American dream, and, and that's how it's sold to everyone, right? Like, yeah. Oh, you go to America, you go to college, you get a degree, and you get a good job. Exactly. And that's exactly. like, so they were kind of pushing you towards that route. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, my mom was a single mom. Okay. My parents are divorced. Yeah. Um, but for my mom, I just wanted to make her proud. Yeah. And so once that's I awesome. did that, 
you know, did the whole ordeal. Yeah. Made her dreams kind of come true yeah. for her son. I was like, all right, mom. Well, I'm gonna make it happen on my own. Yeah. So, but she supported you. Hundred percent. That's awesome. Dude. Um, I bet she's really proud now. Oh yeah. So you started off another company. Yep. Now you never sold prior, right? It was your what was your work background outside of the HR deal? Yeah, I, I was a little bit of everything. My first yeah. job was Jack in the Box. Okay. Then went into like uh, the clothing industry, so like Banana Republic, Gap, yeah. Old Navy, and then I went into working for Amazon as a driver. Yeah. Then went to, to uh, payroll. You tried whatever. Whatever. Yeah, but never no sales really. No. So this was first deal in sales. First sales. What was that like? Um, it was the first day. I, I guess you could say it was like beginner's luck. Yeah. That time because I, I helped protect three families. And your first my day. My first day. And I wow. was like, okay. Yeah. I, I, I think I could do this again. And then I realized the next day I couldn't. But <laughs> what'd you do the next day? Uh, no, nobody. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody. So you just thought like, nobody oh, it's helped. just gonna go like this every day. Right? Yeah, Why wouldn't like, it? <laughs> Why wouldn't it? You know, first day, that's it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Got it. Uh, and I humbled myself. You know, it was yeah. a roller coaster, but got. Past so did it. you struggle early on, or did you bounce back quick? Or? Um. So obviously, first day, beginner's luck. Yeah. And then went to zero, and then it was like it was. It's a roller coaster in yeah. sales. So had my high days, had my low days. Yeah. Um. Obviously. Did a lot of training during that time. And yeah. Honestly, very grateful because I got to learn how to control my emotions. Okay. During that time. I think um, I became more emotionally intelligent. Yeah. When it came to sales. Oh, little by little. It, yeah, it didn't yeah. happen overnight. But Yeah. How long would you do? Months? We, how? Dude, I'm an emotional guy. Yeah. So I say it took me about six months to really, yeah, to really like really understand myself gotcha. like in my emotions so what what you say you're an emotional guy what type of effect did that have on your sales like did you you rode those highs and lows i rode them. yeah yeah like but in, in a good way like obviously i'm a soft kind of voiced individual okay. so whenever i speak to somebody like i don't have all that hype yeah yeah but i know how to control my tone in a way where like hey if this is something serious i'm going to kind of slow down right but if it's something that hey i kind of get got to get through this you know they teach you the scripts and all yeah. that and so getting through that little buffer pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So just being able to change that over yeah. that time. Because it's easy to ride that emotional roller. I mean, especially like... I mean, I still do it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really go away. Right. But I Just manage I know it better. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean, sh starting off first day, helping three families, you're Dude, you're was, probably up here, right? Baller. Like, beating on you. Yeah, you're like, like, I got this. Say no more. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that's where you get messed up because you have those those emotional swings. You're so excited. You're so over the top. And, Absolutely. And I've seen it, like, you know... It, I think when that happens, you lose sight of a lot of the small things, right? Like, you're a sports guy. Now, I'm not a soccer guy, so I don't know the the analogy there, but, like, football, it's blocking and tackling, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the basics, right? Basics. You can have the best play in the world, but, dude, if the linemen don't block, it don't matter what you drew up on your little play sheet. It doesn't matter. No blocking, dude, defense back there, you know, it's over. And I'm sure there, there's a lot of basics in soccer, right? Absolutely. Where you got to be, placement, you're in the wrong yeah. spot, dude. They're looking for you. <laughs> there, you're messing up the whole yep. team. Yep. So, and it's kind of the same thing in sales, right? Like you, when sometimes when we ride those highs, we lose sight of the blocking and tackling. Hundred percent. Right? And then the lows. How how are you with the lows early on? Man, I'm like, I don't want to work. You know, I just want to <laughs> watch Netflix. Yep. Watch. Um, like after a bad day, dude, all the time. Yeah. Or maybe I don't even want to walk into this home. Yeah. Like you know, I've had three people tell me no, mm -hmm. or go know kick me on the side of the curb and yeah. it's like oh, do i have to go through this again yeah and so just going through that you know learning myself how how am i going to take those nose yeah and then just run them because it, it, it's a lonely business when you're out there Very. and now back then this was what um what, what year did you start in the insurance in 1920 or <laughs> not, that, not that no no not how old you were oh, okay. i'm sorry what year, okay. what, year? <laughs> what year um i would say 2021 one okay like right after like honestly the beginning of covid yeah is when i started is when you started okay right when everyone figured out what yeah. was happening got it and then you just jumped into a new industry <laughs> yeah and i was like crap did i do the right it's good job. time to start a new job and, right and i have a daughter so yeah <clears throat> what year was your daughter born she was born in 2019. okay got it so she's a couple years old you're starting yeah. a new career new career so it was it's like, all up and down now were you in home then or were you guys virtual in home yeah they tried doing virtual yeah i went back to in home got it okay and that's what i mean that's even lonelier because you're out there on the road i mean and, i mean the good thing was there was no traffic true true yeah no that one's on the road thing. but i mean that's the way i looked at it yeah it's like hey no one else is doing it yeah let me take advantage got it got it um how long did it take you to 
figure out how to effectively, I know you say no one's perfect at it, but manage these highs and lows to where you could stay consistent. Honestly, repetition. Yeah. It was just reps. I just did so much yeah. in a short amount of time that it just became like second nature. It became a habit. Got it. And, and that's really how I managed it. Yeah. Do you think your sports background helps with that? Like, because that's a lot of what y'all do there, right? Like, it's over and over. You do the same over. stuff every day. Every right? day. Just, yeah. You do the same drill. Yeah. You know, you do a lot of things the same. The yeah. muscle movements, the whole nine. So, doing the same thing over and over again, and it's just like, it becomes like a memory. Yeah. Like second nature. Yeah. And so, once you do that in your sales, and you start saying the same thing kind of over, and it's not saying the same exact same thing over and over, right. but the same message over yeah. and over. Then you understand, you know, okay, if someone, if I say this, this is what I should expect. If I say this, you know, yeah. it's either going to go here or here. So just understanding that. Yeah, no, that's huge. So my youngest daughter's seven. She's a gymnast, competitive gymnast. And she's, now she's seven, so she doesn't get all of it. And she'll okay. say, she'll, like, Daddy, I love the competitions, but I don't like practice. But I'm like, you know why? You love the competitions because you do well. But the reason you do well in the competition is because you spend like six plus hours a week practicing. Practicing. So it's like trying to explain there. But it's even as adults, we kind of get like, right? Like, I just want to go outside. I don't want to do the training. Well, you have to do both, right? And I would assume you still do a lot of training. Absolutely. And you're one of our, I mean, you know, uh, year to date, you've helped almost 500 families. You've been Hall of Fame with us twice, right? So like you obviously know what to do in the field, but you're still getting on training. Absolutely. Have to. Have yeah. to. Like, no one's good enough to not do training. Right. If you think you're good enough, that's when you fail. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I learned. Um, and, and this industry humbles you every single day. Yes. Every day. Every hour. So. Yeah. I'm sure you still have your days, right? Still. still <laughs> What's the, is there, was there one recent, you have a bad day, like where you went O for something? Or? This past Monday. Okay, past Monday. <laughs> <laughs> like yesterday. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had a bad day. Yeah. But it is what it is. I'm here with you guys. I'm enjoying my time. I'm yeah. enjoying life. I'm being able to support my family. But I know, you know, Wednesday comes around, Thursday, whatever day it may yeah. be, I just have that different mentality, different attitude. Right. Just go at it. And would you say that's the biggest change? Like you said earlier, you'd have a bad day and, like, you don't want to go back out. You almost avoid it, right? Like, God, I got to go back. Someone else is going to tell me no? Like, now are you just ready to get back out I'm there just ready fast? To get yeah. Back out there. I'm like, man, I didn't help no one. Yep. I got to help some people. Yeah. And that's that. That's that mind change. Yeah, that's that mind change. It was just a literally a, a slight perspective change, right? That's all it was. You always see these, these analogies. Like, think about you know you're flying a plane somewhere, and dude, that plane could be off a degree, right? And you could go. And go by the time you get to your destination, you're going aiming for Dallas, and all of a sudden you're in you're in Columbia, right? Like, <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> like, oh man, well, that's not but, too bad though. <laughs> yeah, it ain't too bad, but it was just a little bit off, a right? And I off, think yeah. a lot of times that's what happens with perspective. Where it's not you don't need to do a whole 180. Yeah. It's just, all right, I'm looking at it as I had a shitty day. I went 0 for 5. God, I don't want to go meet with anyone else. Or, God, I can't wait to go meet with some more people. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, whatever you tell yourself is true. It's true. You'll 100%. believe it. Now, we, you know, we talked a little bit about, or we, we kind of teased it. You got through some stuff when you were at the other company, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Some medical stuff. Now, this was something that you said it was diagnosed when you were young. Yeah. I yeah. was diagnosed when I was pretty young. Yeah. It, it's called, you know, Alport Syndrome. Okay. Um, hereditary, born with it, nothing I could have yeah. really done or do, whether that's vitamins, uh, yeah. nutritional stuff, all the herbs. My my mom's very much into herbs. Got it. So, um, but nothing I could have done. Yeah. It was just a time. Now, were there other people in your face that's hereditary? Like, did your mom have it or anyone else older than you or no? That's the crazy part. My mom nor my dad had it. Really? And I asked them, like, grandma, granddad, yeah. nobody. Nobody. I was like, okay. Wow. So you were just the, the lucky one who lucky got it. Yeah. So at 10, how is it, like, what did you go, I mean, it's at 10 years old. I mean, what are you going through to even get tested for get this? Tested. So they did a biopsy. Yeah. Um, you had some pain or something? So obviously, so when it comes to uh, kidneys, obviously yeah. they filter your blood yeah. through your urine. Right. Well, they noticed that I had um, red blood cells in my urine. Okay. But not things that you can see. It was microscopic. Got it. So when they tested it to make sure, you know, the annual checkups and all yeah. that, they noticed, hey, like, you know, your son, we noticed that he has blood in his urine. Yeah. So what's going on? They did a biopsy to double check. When they did the biopsy, they did a DNA check. Yeah. It came out to be uh, Alport syndrome. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I didn't know. I was 10. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even so know. So, you really know symptoms medication. or anything? I didn't have time? any symptoms. They just prescribed me high blood pressure medication. Okay. And they were like, that's it. Yeah. You know? And I was like, okay. You know, I, 
proceeded yeah. you know, through high school, junior high, like normal. And really, it was just, it, it, it became like, it, it was just one day. Really? I just started feeling symptoms. Yeah. I was like, this isn't normal. Wow. And so went to the hospital. Doctor confirmed, you know, your kidneys are failing. Wow. How so old were you at this point? I was 20. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Man, so how, what's that like getting that news at 20 years old? It's hard. Yeah. You know, you're young. You don't know what's about to happen. Yeah. Um, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So um, at 20, did you, like, you were on dialysis. How long were you on dialysis for? Um, luckily only a year. Yeah. The average is about five to six. Wow. So you did it in a year. Yeah. Um, had a lot of good people in my life. Yeah. A lot of good people. Yeah. So it was just harder to do the kidney transplant because of COVID. Yeah. So, um, you know, cause everyone was kind of spaced out. Absolutely. But, uh, what's crazy is I actually had a living donor. Really? That I knew. She was just an acquaintance that I played soccer with. Wow. And, uh, she's like, you know, Hey, I want to donate. She went through the whole deal. We actually even had a date set. Oh my God. And funny enough, I think two days after I got eight missed calls from the hospital and they told me, Hey, are you ready for yeah. your surgery? And I said, well, cause when I, when they confirmed the living donor, we set a date for like two months out. Okay. So then the next day I got eight missed calls and I was like, dude, why am I getting so many missed calls? Called them back. They said, Hey, are you ready for your kidney transplant? And I was like, that's not in like till two months. Yeah. Well, Turns out, you know, unfortunately, someone recently passed, but oh, they were wow. a donor. Okay. And I was a 0% match, which means, like, when you're a 0% match, it's like this person was, like, your sibling. Really? So I was, like, they were, like, taken. Yeah. So took it, and literally, it was day and night, switched. Wow. I was in that hospital for only three days. Really? <laughs> they did. It was crazy. It's weird. Yeah. But, you know, to go through that and... It's a lot, man, it's especially at lot. 20. I mean, it's a lot at any age, but I mean, your, your life's just getting going. And, exactly. Yeah. And then, I mean, when you first found the news that you had a transplant, what were you thinking? I was stoked. Yeah. You know, stoked. Yeah. And then you had it done. Um, what, how was it? Like, how was the recovery? Pretty, I mean, you know, three days. First first day, obviously, they did the transplant. Yeah. Had, you know, did the IVs, all that good stuff, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, they just monitored my, my levels. Yeah. They, they wanted to make sure that there was enough output yeah. and that I could walk. Wow. Obviously I couldn't really walk, but yeah. they were like, Hey, you're good now. Yeah. I was like, okay. Um, everything hurt obviously for the first week, two weeks. Yeah. Then after it was good. Yeah. So after a few weeks you were kind of back to normal. I was, was kind of normal. Wow. Was, and now, normal. now that you have this transplant, does that, basically fix this condition could it still come back up it or could still come it back could up. still come up yeah because um since it's a new organ yeah your like your autoimmune doesn't recognize that organ right so it's always attacking it yeah so for the rest of my life now i have to take medication for that to but i'm willing it, yeah. i'm Absolutely. willing to take that medication over dallas any day of the week yeah any. dude that does not sound fun and you're there for like how long does it take for like a session when you're on dialysis so there's two types yeah. i won't go into all details yeah, but yeah. the most common one is where you go in and out every other day okay you stay there for about four to five hours that's what you did uh no i actually did uh, what's called peritoneal yeah so you could do it at home okay but i did it at night got it so i did it throughout the whole night but then during the day i was fine yeah well fine, fine. <laughs> not really. as fine as you could be as dialysis. fine as yeah. you could be during that time yeah but at night i did it every single night really yeah were you able to sleep on one side yeah Wow, it was crazy. Yep. Well, well, hey, you're still here. You made it through. Exactly. I, mean, it's, um, I appreciate you sharing that. Though. I really you. do. Um, and you had a daughter at the time. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be like in the back of your mind the whole time, right? I was desperate. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Time. Well, thank God it worked out. You're here. Did, yeah. Um, and you were still at the other company mm -hmm. then, right? Yeah. When did you first find out about us? So I found out literally a year after okay. uh, Nina and Hayden reached out to me through LinkedIn yep. and Instagram. Okay. Cause I thought it was weird that, you know, uh, LinkedIn was kind of getting, I guess, more popular during that time. Yeah. So they followed me and I checked their page. They were like, okay, yeah. nice. And then they followed me on Instagram and I was like, okay, what do you want? And then, um, <laughs> you know, they were messaging me and I was like, uh, and then they went on this trip, this work trip. Yeah. They helped protect a lot of families. Yeah. 
And I was like, all right. Was this when they went to Hawaii? That's when they went to Hawaii. Yeah. And I was like, all right, if I can do at least half. Yeah. Half of that. And I told him that over the phone because I was at Target with my wife. Yeah. Uh, of, of course it's Target. But Of course. <laughs> of course. But, you know, and I was like, all right, if I can do at least half. Yeah. You guys. You know, Got it. Because at that Boston time where you so. were, how many families would you help a week roughly? Uh, with the previous yeah. company, I'd say like two families a week. So wow. eight families a month. Um, and obviously, the, you know, we didn't get paid the greatest. Yeah. What was the carrier so, contract rate? Uh, anywhere between 50 to 60%. Got it, got it. So you saw, okay, they're helping whatever they were doing. I mean, probably, what, 40, 50 a month or something? Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, because they, they have, especially back then, they've helped a lot of families. They, they did it over a weekend. Yeah. And I was like, dude. Wow. So they were doing what I you would do that, in a quarter in a not weekend. Even in a year. Wow. Because they, I think, protected 60 families in a weekend. Yeah. And I did, t- yeah. I didn't even do it. What were you thinking? You're like, how is that even possible? Dude, I was like, this has to be a scam or something. <laughs> like, right. no one makes that, you know, yeah. no one protects that many families during in that, that time. Po- yeah. No one does. Yeah. And so, you know, chopped it down with Hayden, um, taught me the process. And I was like, all right, that's it. Let's go. So after that trip, how how much after that did you jump ship? Same day. Same, really? Same day. You saw the results and like, all right, I'm going. I was like, all right, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's the type of person I am. I'm like, yeah, like like I said, I'm a very emotional type yeah. of guy. And so, you know, I, I granted my emotions to advantage of me there. But yeah. I was hey, like, sometimes it works out. It, though, it works right? out. Like, look where we're at. So I was like, all right. So took it, did, you know, the whole contracting with all the carriers. Yeah. Went to work after one week. Yeah. God, you probably were you looking at it like, well, what I got to lose? I'm helping eight families a month exactly. here. Exactly. Like, I mean, <laughs> can't get any worse, can't right? Get any worse. <laughs> and I was like, worst case, you know, I go back to doing whatever. Yep. And then whatever. the carrier contract rate, I could imagine it was, all, I mean, the starting's 80, so it would have been that or more because you more. had volume, right? Yeah. So, you know, you're getting a bump there and then learning how to help more families. That's it. How, it, what was that transition like? Because you, um, where you worked before, were there like high intent leads? Was it more of like a bait and switch? What, bait and switch. Bait and switch. So they're filling switch. out something that's not life insurance yep. and you then, which is why you help, you know, a few a week because it's weeks. a lot, right? It's a lot. Yeah. They have no interest. A lot of work, not a lot of output. Right. Because that's the thing, like there's, and, and then listen, there's all kinds of companies out there. Yeah. And the thing about what we do is everyone needs it. So oh, there yeah. are plenty of companies where the lead may say nothing about life insurance. This is not what we do, so I can't really, but you meet with most people. Everyone needs life insurance. Everyone it's just, life insurance. it takes a lot longer to convince someone who wasn't looking for it initially. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's like, dude, everyone needs clothes. Right. But if I'm not clothing shopping and you're out here trying to sell me a jacket, I'm like, dude, I got plenty of jackets, bro. You you go. Go, well, why is this one so special? Exactly. But if I filled something out saying, dude, I want a black jacket, then you're my guy, right? I got you. So yeah. w- when you first did, you, how soon did they show you the leads? Like how, when did you learn? Um, I mean, during the first week while yeah. I was waiting on the carriers. Yeah. What did you think when you first saw like, oh, it says life insurance. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, thank God I get to say life insurance <laughs> right. and not something else. Um, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and the leads, they, they knew what we were talking about. Yeah. You know, and I just went to work. That's it. It. I, I didn't make it complicated. No. I just like the way they did it was simple. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to just do the same thing. Yeah. So how, how was that transition? Like, did you, I mean, kind of hit the ground running? I went, I went, I went to work. Yeah. I, I got a credit card. Never got a credit card before okay. in my life. Really? Thousand dollar limit. Wait, how old were you? I was 20. 20? Okay. Two? Something like that. 22, first credit card, thousand dollar limit. Yeah. What'd you do? Buy a bunch of leads? I just bought leads. I just maxed it out, dude. <laughs> I just nice. maxed it out. Maxed and then, it out. Um, and uh, listen, we're not telling sense. you to do that. That's David's result. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah that's if you want to, do. hey, that's on you. But, that's on you. But you, but you had faith that, all right, because yeah. I mean, you've, you've helped families before in a different yeah. area. So I was know? like, I, I can do this again. You yeah. Know? And so I just bought leads, went to work. Yeah. And then what I did is, you know, 50% of whatever I made. Yeah. Just went back into the business. Back in the business. And just went to repeat. So you understood that early on. Like, I, I, f- I understood that just because I'm like, I need to pay this credit card off. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, all right, as long as I can help, cause the way they broke it down is it just said like, as long as you can help two families, as long as you can double yeah. your initial investment for the most part, right. as long as you do what you need to do, you know, you protect those families, you do the best that you can do, you know, you could work it, work yeah. it out with your credit card. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'm gonna do that. Right. I'm, I'm gonna go to work. I'm gonna just dial in. And I, I worked some lengthy hours. I bet. My first three. Yeah. Months. What was your schedule? Like your first few weeks? Um, I would say like, you know, 
8 a.m., I, I went to work yeah. every day, yeah. even Sundays and Saturdays. Yeah. My wife was like, I was like, give me three months. Just yeah. give me three months. I know I changed from job to job. And that's what, you know, me, I, I love my wife. She, yeah. she supported me through everything. Yeah. And so I owe her the world. Absolutely. So for me, I was like, three months on this, I promise you, yeah. you will not look back. What did she say? <clears throat> She's like, all right. Yeah. So and that's huge because I think where you, you see it get messed up a lot, Dave, is when you, they don't have that conversation with the spouse, right? 100%. You see that a lot. It's like 100%. start over here, whatever it is. And, you know, you, you start here and you just up your workload. And you don't have that conversation. And then it almost becomes where this is now the bad thing. Like, oh, that's yes. taking you out of that. And really, that's like. You just got to have a plan. You got to communicate. You got to communicate. You said, give me 90 days. That's all it was. It was just, hey, because I I let my wife know everything, everything. Yeah. And it's, it's like, like, what was there to hide? Like, just let her, like, I have to let her know, like, give me at least a certain amount of time. Let me just go in all in a hundred percent. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I know that my work ethic will make up for whatever I misplaced during that time. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, it, it, it also will allow you to be less stressed when you're out there. Because that's one less thing you got to worry about is, oh my God, I'm not home. I'm, there, you know. Exactly. How how old was your daughter when you started with us? She was a few months old. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to explain to her yet. She's only a few months. Yeah. She, I didn't have to explain <laughs> to her. I mean, I don't really have to explain to her too much yeah. now. But yeah. Yeah. She's four now. She's four. Four. Yeah. Four. But even that, when she gets old, I mean, it, it's also you can have those conversations too. Yeah. Because I mean, your kids wonder, well, where's dad? Why is exactly. he never here? Exactly. Well, dad's out there doing something for you. For you. You know. And, and just. Communicate. That's. I mean, that's the most important. This, I mean, I'm not here to be a freaking uh, marriage counselor, but right. that's that's key. Yeah. It's, you just gotta tell people. I mean, that's in business too. Right. Communicate with your agents. Communicate with your. You know. Yeah, you could say upline, but it doesn't really matter who's no. your upline. It's just communicate. Yeah. Talk to people. Let them know. Be straightforward with them, and go to work. Yeah, absolutely. So you've been selling for a few years now. Yep. Um, you've had any death claims? Yes, a few. Yeah. Is there one that sticks out as the most impactful? Or is so there's a few. Yeah. Um, but I'd say the most recent one. Okay. Uh, recently sold um, Miss Mary yeah. a while back. I'd say about three months ago, actually. And um, about two weeks later, her husband passed okay. due to an accident. Wow. Um, while he was at work. And the carrier, I mean, the process, obviously, I kind of already knew the steps a little bit. Yeah. So I was able to guide her, which was huge for me because uh, recently I lost my father-in-law. Oh, wow, so yeah. And he didn't have life insurance. Oh, man. So you got to see both sides of this. I got to see. Yeah. And the funny thing is I'm the one that sells it. Right. But there was not, you know, there's certain things you can't control. Yeah. Whether people keep their policies or not. Yeah. At the end of the day, you just got to do your best. Let them know why it's important. Right. And they know it's important. Absolutely. They know it's important. And so when she knew that, you know, and by the grace of the Lord, you know, I cried with her, honestly. Really? <clears throat> when she lost her husband, I cried with wow. her. I was like. You know, this is what I, this is why I do what I do. Yeah. And so I helped her. I guided her. We did the paperwork together. Yeah. We made sure everything was in order. Carrie came back, sent her that check in two weeks. Yeah. And she was so thankful. Wow. So thankful. How much did that change? Like what you do moving forward with your clients? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Cause it, it, it makes it real. You know, I say it, it all the time on here, but it, it's one thing for me to tell you, hey, David, you know, clients pass, and hey, I'm, you know, I delivered his death check. It's a good story. Yeah. You, I mean, you can empathize with it and whatnot, but until you go through it, it's different. It's very different because yeah. these are people's lives. Right. Like, like, yeah, we say life insurance, and we kind of say it out there. Yeah. Right? We talk about, you know, a lot of different things when it comes to mm-hmm. this industry, but the most important, and it just comes down to it, is the family that you're helping on the yeah. other side. That's it. And a lot of us get into this business so young. I mean, when you're in your early 20s, you're like, you get, all you last think thing you're thinking about is that, right? Is that. That's the yeah. last thing. Yeah. And then, I mean, seeing it, you know, firsthand. Yeah. Um, but, dude, that's, it, it's, I mean, your, your story is impactful, very impactful. And also, I mean, going through what you went through, does that give you a different perspective, too? Like, I mean. Yeah. I think that's why yeah. people look at me as a little bit more mature. Yeah. Because I went through that at such a young age. Yeah. So I went through life real quick. Yeah. And, uh. Life tested me, but, you know, we pursued it, we challenged it, and we conquered it. Yeah. And we just keep moving forward, and that's what I always tell everybody. How much does that motivate you, just moving forward, knowing that I went through this, I pushed through it? A lot. I mean, there's nothing that I can't do. Yeah. 
times ever since I went through that. Right. There's nothing I can't do. Because I got to imagine, even on your worst day, you're like, it still is it's, not that again. It's not that. Yeah. It's not that. I don't yeah. have to go through the tiredness, the headaches, the yeah. migraines, the schedule of that. Honestly, that taught me a lot about scheduling. I how bet. much time we have. Like, I crunched down my time in 15-minute increments mm -hmm. because of that situation. Yeah. And I realized how much time we waste on our phones, on a lot of crap. Right. So when I went through that, and, and now I look at myself, and I'm like, I got to make more of my time. Yeah. You always kind of have that feeling? Always. Yeah. Always. Um, I'm assuming your family's your what drives you, your why. 100%. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and I guess how do you – how do you use that to keep going? Because there's days you're out there, right, where it's like, like you said, Monday, nothing went my way, right? Yeah. Is that what, what do you use to push through those moments? Um, to push through those moments? I mean, honestly, like, it's like, I'm grateful I'm here. Yeah. I'm going to take every opportunity that I can to make my wife's life better. Yeah. To make my daughter's life better better to make sure that she goes to a nice education if she wants to right or whatever she decides to pursue well whatever my wife wants to pursue yeah but make sure that finances are not an issue um, Got it. especially coming from a household that moved countries yeah you know it's like we didn't have the finances we didn't right. have that luxury so you've seen that side you i've do. seen it. Yeah. And it and it's not you know and i'm very grateful for my mom yeah very grateful so being able to see that live through it and just say you know what I'm gonna make sure that our family doesn't go through that. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be all right. So you're raised by a single mom. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Siblings? Siblings, yeah. Uh, from many? both sides. Okay. Got it, it's like a, my family's like a telenovela. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of drama. <laughs> yeah. On both sides of the family, but uh, got five siblings. Okay. So. Got it. So you, you, I mean, your mom struggled growing up. Um, honestly, my mom's. I think that's where I get my work ethic. Yeah. Well, I can't. You know, my dad too. Yeah. But yeah. mom. Was, so you saw it. First I saw time. it. You know, yeah. I was like, I cannot give any excuses to this woman. Yeah. None. So. That's cool. Very grateful. What's it like now with your mom? Because your mom, you know, wanted you to go to the college route. You tried yeah. it. Now you're doing this. You're helping families. You know, you're making a good living. Like, what's what's it like now with your mom? Oh, she's so happy for me. I bet. She's so happy for me. She, yeah. she just wants the best for the kids. Yeah. I mean, that's what any parent wants. Like, just how I want the best for my daughter. And, you know, obviously we deliver our messages a different way. Yeah. You but at the end of the day, like, it's all love. So it's just being able to perceive that from yep. a different point of view. And then, you know, just I'm, I'm just super grateful for her. She taught me a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. Taught me a lot. Precious, you have a reminder to ask drunk to go to eat this week. What's that? No, that's no? Not okay, that's okay, cool. I'm like, I don't know. Got it. All right. I'm like, am I missing something here? <laughs> all right. Um, are you building a team? Yeah. yeah, how's that going? Really good. Yeah, really good. We're we're getting the ball rolling. I mean, we've been doing it for a little bit, but <clears throat> uh, we got the systems and processes. Nice. Stuff for sure. How many families did you guys collectively protect last month? Last month, uh, about two fifty. Two hundred fifty. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's a good really start, good. dude. Getting it going. Get it going. Yeah. How how do you like that part recruiting? Um, do I like it? Yeah. Dude, yeah, of course. Yeah. It, it changed my life, and yeah. it, and I have the opportunity to show it to you and let you know, like. Hey, but of course, is everyone the same? No. 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 Every, everyone's situation is different. My life story, my testimony is completely different from yours. Absolutely. What I went through is going to be completely different from what you're going to go through. Yeah. It may be good. It may be bad. We don't know. But right. as long as we you know, have those systems, I guide you, I train you, we do the sales process, do the whole ordeal. I'm going to train you from top to bottom, A to Z. Yeah. Know the ins and outs. You know, we're going to yeah. do our best. How how important is it for you to keep doing what you're doing from a personal standpoint, helping that many families while you're building this business in your mind? You can't tell me any excuses. Yeah. No one can give me an excuse. Right. You just can't. Like, David, I can't because my dog, I have to walk my dog. Like, cool, dude, do you have dialysis? Right. No, okay, cool. You yeah. Away. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like you have a built-in excuse remover. You, <laughs> like, you, you haven't really, like, no one's given me, no one has right. ever given me an excuse yeah. that they can't go to work. Right. And I just, I just tell everyone, it's just on you. Yeah. Whether you want to find a way or not, that's up to you. I'm not, I'm not your mom, not your dad. Right. You go to work like a grown man, a grown woman. Yeah. That's it. I will provide you the sources, the, you know, the material, the resources that you need to be able to help your family more, help other families. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's your choice. Yeah. 
how thankful are you that Nina and Hayden didn't give up? Because it, you like you said, they almost like harassed you, right? They, like they you followed you on ball. They're, 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 they're messaging yeah. me every other week. I was yeah. like, all right, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Now, did, was any of it? Did it feel desperate, or was it just like they just keep putting this in my face? Like, well, it's because they used to work with the practice. Company okay. I worked. So they knew where you were at. So they were, they knew. And so I was like, okay, they knew where I'm at. They yeah. were in a position that was pretty high up there. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, there must have been a reason for the Got change. It. And you knew them from the other company? Yeah. No. But you just knew they worked there? They, I just knew they worked there. Yeah. Yep. Got it. So part of you're also curious, like, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> they left here they left to go here there. To go there. Why? Yeah. So piqued my curiosity. Had a Zoom call with them. I yeah. No, dude, honestly, no, we didn't even have a Zoom call. We just had two phone calls. Yeah. Had no idea who the heck they were. Just knew they used to work with the practice company. And right. And I feel like there's a lot to that because, number one, it, when you're recruiting, a lot of people ask someone once and give up. They go, yes. hey, Dave, you should check this out. Most people are going to say no the first time. No the first time. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're not interested. Exactly. I mean, you go clothes shopping, right? Absolutely. When you went to the store to buy that jacket, what did the person say when you walked in most likely? How can we help you? What did you probably say? I'm um, just looking around. Yeah. Did you know you were going to buy a jacket? Nope. No? But I if you started talking to them, you probably could have figured it out, I right? figured it out. Would have been in and out of the store quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, nine times out of ten, but that we're just taught to, no, I'm good. Yeah, well, our so first reaction is right. just to kind of back off. So odds are, when you ask someone the first time, they're probably not going to say yes the first time. Yeah. And if they do, it'd be a little weird, right? Yeah, like. Yeah. Hey, Dave, you don't know me at all. You want to join my company? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Like, <laughs> like, that'd be a little odd. You probably yeah, don't want to recruit that person. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. That's something's fishy. Right? right? Yeah. But it's like, dude, just ask. Absolutely. And it was they weren't begging you. They, but they were, were just like, hey, dude, you sure? Yeah. Check this out. Look hey, at this. Like, we, we know you're a killer in the other company. Yeah. We think you'd be a great fit here. You know, little messages like little that. Bit. And it, it just, I was like, okay. Like, I, I said no to you, like, a few times. But, yeah. like. I was like, let me check it out. Let me right. see what's going on. And then once you saw the results, that's the other like, thing. You know, it's like you get people that want to build a business, but they're not out there removing the excuses like you are. It's like, well, I don't need to sell my, you know, people I recruit are going to sell. It's like, well, bro, who's going to train them? Who's going to remove the excuses? Exactly. When they tell you that, you know, it's their daughter's birthday on, you know, next Tuesday, but they can't work today because they're planning for it. Or my second cousin's brother's son's having a cookout this weekend, so I can't dial David. It's a family thing you don't understand. But if you're not out there selling it, it's like, it's, what What are you going to do? Exactly. You shouldn't go to that. I'm like, dude, you're going to cookouts this weekend too. Yeah, but exactly. I'm different. I'm running the agency. Dude, if, if I got to imagine if Nita and Hayden weren't helping that many families, you probably wouldn't have thought twice about joining us. 100%. Yeah. Because what are they going to teach you? They can't. If they were helping eight families a month like you were there, you're like, well, I don't need to move to that company. I'm doing that here already. Exactly. <laughs> right? Like, what's, what's the point of moving? Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that stuff's so key that some people lose sight of. It's like leading from the front. I'm not saying, I mean, you don't have to help 40 families a day. No, you don't. But you have to at least show that you know how Which, to help families how to help at that families level. And be able to train those individuals. Yeah. Because, like, I wouldn't probably be here if it wasn't for their guidance. Yeah. But absolutely. it was because... They went through the struggle. You know, they're right. not, I wouldn't say struggle. They went through the trenches with yeah. us. You know, they didn't help, they didn't held my hand. No. They didn't tell me, hey, David, this is what you got to do. You got to click this button, and then you got to go here. Right. So it was no, none of that. It was just, hey, this is what you got to do. Yeah. Follow these steps, and the rest is on you. Go to work. Absolutely. And so that's what we did. And, and again, it's like, you know, removing those excuses. You've been Absolutely. Hall of Fame twice now. You've helped over 500 families or close to 500 this year. That means that if I'm on your team, and I'm running a business, I'm a new guy, and I call you about a situation in the house, there's 0% chance you haven't already gone through that. Like, you, you've you've gone through it all. I've gone through it. You've helped over 400 families. You've gone through everything you can go through in this business. Yep, 100%. So when anyone calls, you're never going to believe what happened. I was and you're like, no, no, hey, when, when that happens, do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I've it's been there like 20 times. Dude. Do yeah. the X, Y, and Z, and you're good. There you go. That's you it. know, but you, it's the repetition. It's you the have to go out there and get those reps. reps. Yep. That's huge. Well, this is good stuff. We're we're like I like to wrap with some fun stuff. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna just throw some random questions out at you. Gotcha. So I like to wrap with some fun stuff. I'm throw okay. some random questions, but I do want to ask the audience something because um, okay. you've gone through some life changing things, right? It was a life changing event. 
Now, you guys that are watching in the comments, have you gone through anything that's changed your life? Maybe not as, you know, as extensive as David, but if you did, share it in the comments, sound off, um, and we appreciate all the interactions. So let us know, and also hit the subscribe button while you're doing that. Um, so, a couple fun things. Um, let's see. I got a list of crazy questions here. So I'm, I'm going to go crazy, crazy with the first one, David. All right. I, if 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 you don't like this question, blame Precious. Okay. okay. What's your one weapon of choice during a zombie apocalypse? That's funny because I play a lot of Call of Duty. <laughs> um, I'd say like a specific. I mean, it's just gonna have to be a machine gun. Okay. Well, you got experience go during Call of Duty, so go to work. makes sense. <laughs> um, in business and in in Call of Duty. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Ice coffee in the winter or no? Yes. Yes. I'm okay. a coffee guy. Clean Are you? In. So of course, hot and cold doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But in the winter, now you, now I know you're Colombian coffee. This next question, the last one, Dunkin' or Starbucks? Uh, I know they don't add up to Colombian coffee, but uh, funny enough, I like Dunkin'. Do you really? Yeah. You fit in here, bro, because I'm all Dunkin' all the way, man. Starbucks, hey. that shit's for the birds. Let's go, so, Let's no. go for the birds. Nope. <laughs> yep. Get get that. No. Nope. Close all the Starbucks. I could care less. Give me Dunkin'. Go. I'm good. Dunkin', baby. Um, but dude, I, I appreciate you coming and doing this. Thank you for having this me. good man. stuff. Absolutely. And it's, guys. I mean, impactful story. I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. I know it's not always easy to share that stuff, but it, it's definitely motivational. Helps and yeah. it's awesome to see you on the other side of that. You know, and I'll, and it's like if we didn't ask, you would never know. Exactly. And I think that's a testament to your strength and pushing through and, um, you know, the example you're setting for your daughter. And it, can we, is the other news out there or no? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Want to spoil, yeah. And one other one on the way. Another one so on the way. So congratulations, dude. You. You're setting a great Thank example. You. And for anyone watching, David, there's a lot of people watching right now. There's probably some people that aren't with us that would like to join your agency, right? So if anyone wants to reach out to you, where can they follow you? What are your handles? Uh, so for Instagram, it's at underscore David Pinilla. Okay. Um, Facebook, just David Pinilla, pretty simple. And if you're with FFL, you can't join his team. There you go. <laughs> so we're not, this is not open for If yeah. you're not with us and you go, hey, you know what? I like this guy's story. I like what he does. I'd be a good fit. Hey, reach out. Absolutely. If you're with us, oh, you can reach out, but you stay on your team. Exactly. You're good. Um, but we're one big team. So, Absolutely. I mean, I don't think Dave is going to be like, oh, you're with so-and-so. I'm not helping you. No, no. We're, we're one family. One, one I've had team, plenty of people from different agencies help me. Yeah. And I give it back. Absolutely. 100%. There's and so many, like Rob Richmond. Yeah. Rob's great. Dude. Stud. Worked out of his office. That's where I worked out of. Really? And, I mean, nice. he didn't help me, but, like, he, like, watched He, you know, he gave me some pointers. And yeah. Like, man, that's helped me. And then anytime he has agents, dude, and they have questions. Yeah. Dude, that's what it's about, man. One, like you said, one big family, one big team. We're all in this together. So, Rising Tide right, raises all ships, right? Raises so, that, yeah. well, thanks again, dude. I appreciate you coming you up. Guys. guys, thanks for watching. Download, hit the subscribe button. Let us know your thoughts and let us know, Dunkin' or Starbucks. I mean, I thought that's really important, but hey, drop it in the comments. But let's go Dunkin'. Uh, let's go Dunkin'. That's, that's right. Okay. See, I knew I liked you when you walked in. Though. It was like you, something man. about it. And that, that's what it was, the Dunkin'. The, the so Dunkin'. We, we bond there. Okay, but um, th thanks for checking us out. Stay tuned next week. We're here every week on True Talk. We'll see you.